So for you ladies that are not aware, so I run a, a, um, a marketing and communications business and um, we're a creative data driven business and we work with multinationals and global companies in order to help them with their brand strategies, with their marketing strategies, their value posi um, uh, uh, positioning and so forth. More importantly is also um, how we do it. So we would first go and collect it and I'm telling you these things because I want you to know that what I'm going to tell you today is like how we're going to build our personal brands. It's exactly the same way we would build a, a, a company's brand, just a little bit different, but it, it gives you just a great insight as to how you can put yourself out in the market. Um, so the first thing is you collect data, right? It's a normal thing. You collect data, whether it's data analytics or we do netnography as well. We will collect that data and then we go into the think mode. And the think mode is how we come up with the social media strategies, the content marketing strategies and uh, the, the buyer's journeys and personas and custom experiences and all of that kind of stuff. Then it goes into the creation part where we would, for example, do the filming, where, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a documentary. Um, and then we also do podcasts, producing shows for clients. And then we also do like all of that kind of stuff um, and events. Um, it's all something we, we're starting to branch in again to. Um, and those things are so important when you start taking this category. So the next thing is, is then we go into the educational stage as well, where we would help clients um, if they want to start their own internal agency or anything like that, that we can actually facilitate and help them um, throughout the process and how to put the processes in place and how to do things properly. But those four things that I just mentioned to you, it's collecting data, thinking about your strategy, um, and then it's the creation of your content, what you want to say, the words you want to use, how you want to put yourself out in the market. And then the other thing is educate and how you're going to educate and be a thought leader um, in your in your industry. So those four things are also very, very important and to have structure in how you create your personal brand. Sorry about that. I just want to accept somebody to come in. All right. So I always believe... <laughs> First, you build the ark and then they will come, just like we're doing with conscious leaders. I have no doubt that we're going to have something fabulous in, in 12 months, a year from now, now, or two years from now, or 10 years from now. But it's build the ark and they will come. The same as with your personal brand. You never know that speaking opportunity is going to come towards you and you're just going to have to go, oh my gosh, yes, I accept. So many times um, it was in, it's in the moment where you go like, I don't know if I can do this. I actually had an interview with a lady um, that's a managing director of Manpower in South Africa. And we were talking about her career journey and she was an acting managing director because her, her the previous managing director um, couldn't make it. Um, and that she had to uh, fill in the role. And then she was like, OK, right, um, I, I'm going to say yes to this, but I don't know if I can do it. But it's just saying that, yes, if I look at my own career, I've traveled across 40 countries, spoken at digital marketing conferences, uh, mobile marketing, technology, etc. And if I didn't have my personal brand set up and my biographies and all of those things ready, I wouldn't have been able to take that, that call to adventure to actually go and present myself um, overseas. So that is just a little bit of um, context around just the background. But I want to start off um, more importantly, to talk to you ladies about we need, in order for us to make an impact in the world, we know, right, that the system around us is failing and it's falling apart and parallel systems are starting um, to rise up. We know that if we are in the room and we feel like we're not fitting in, we need to either bring change in that room or we need to change the room or that room will change us. I've made the mistake in my, um, you know, in the beginning of my career when I did my personal brand and put myself out there, I, I said the things that I thought people want to hear. So I kept on getting all of these speaking engagements and being in, in places where I don't connect to the topic at all. And I couldn't actually um, find that connection. And one thing I always tell um, all of my friends is if you if you put authenticity out in the world and you put out what you want and what you want to attract, that will come to you. But if you're not putting something authentic out there, it will find you and you are going to have the same problem. So you're going to attract things that are not meant for you. So it's always important for you to, to bear that in mind. Um, 
it is equally important for us to get into these room in order uh, to get into these room in order for us to to bring change. So what I would like to suggest is there's five ways to be an authentic leader. And we actually have a webinar with Dr. Milani van Roy that's coming up, um, I think, in two weeks from now about authentic leadership. Wow, it's going to be powerful. Um, she's quite a trailblazer. But these are the things that's important when you build your personal brand it's important to rethink what is your leadership image that you want to put out in the world the second thing that you need to do is to increase your own self-awareness and consciousness about who you are what is your purpose why are you here what what are the things that you want to do in your life um and also it's a very difficult thing when you're in that transition in your career right so you're doing something that you don't want to do right now start building your brand for where you want to be where you want to start um transitioning in order for those opportunities to start finding you but i'll give you the tactics but i first want to talk the inside stuff which is important the next thing is to assess what is your values what do you stand for what do you not stand for if you don't understand if you don't define those rules what is your values and you don't know what they are you can't set boundaries and you're going to say yes to the wrong opportunities and you're going to say no to the right opportunities. And it's important for you to understand what is your value system? What are you standing for? But also that you can lead a way forward. Um, and then it's taking that action and getting support from people and building your network and um Darshni is doing a great job in that space, um, creating table, table of 12, um, creating intimate places and spaces for women to network and getting to know each other. And then it's also how do you put yourself out into the world, the, the effective communication? I always believe um, these certain words, like, for example, Kanisa knows me. My favorite word is shining and vibing lately because it's funny because that's how I am. So um, also with the perimenopause, I'm always having a little bit of a glow because I'm always having hot flushes or something. So I'm always shining and vibing. But it's also I, I just think it's funny, but that's my kind of vocabulary. People know I come up with strange words or I'll make up my own words because that's who I am. And if I don't you do that, then it almost seems like I'm not being authentic or I'm or, or I'm guarding myself or I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not. And people pick these things up. So you need to, to almost take your words that you use and how you use them is to create your own little glossary. Create a glossary of words that you would use, how you would put it out um, if you start writing and have almost like a 10 step rule for yourself to so, circle okay, right when I do this. Um, when this thing that that's how I'm going to speak, this is going to be the words that um, resonates with me and try and build on that. You might learn new words along the way, add them to that glossary. They always come in handy at some point in, in, in your life. Um, the other thing is developing a persona. The persona is so, so important is who am I? What is my values? What do I stand for? Um, who, are, who, who do I want to be seen as? What do I want to be recognized? Who's my role models? Um, I always love Oprah Winfrey. Um, now I'm not, I'm a bit concerned about what's going on out there, but I've always loved her approach because she always came across very authentic for me. Um, and then, you know, some people will will be authentic and then you start feeling, listen, something doesn't feel right, right? And this is the point, is people are no longer seeking information. They are seeking wisdom. This means there's a massive paradigm shift happening. And this is important where if you are building a personal brand, if you're going to fake it and you're going to be a content DJ and you're just going to put up things and trying to impress people rather than saying what's really on your mind, what's really a pressing matter for you, something that's really um, that you are very passionate about. What's going to happen is people are going to start feeling it because we're moving away from where people care about your words as well. We are moving into a space where it's about how do you make me feel? When I see an image of you, how does that image make me feel? Does your, if you, for example, um, and, and I'm, I'm just using this as an example because I'm seeing it a lot um, in the technology space. So many people are taking their images and they're so ashamed of it. And then what they do is they will take their um, photographs and they put it in an AI, um, generative AI software, and then they create a, a lookalike looking perfect. The problem with that is you can feel it, you can see it, you look at it and you go, that doesn't look real. 
the moment you see, think that, then you go, okay, right. If this person can't even show me who they are, how can I do business with them? The second thing is, is that when this happened to me in my in uh, my first photo shoot I ever did, um, I didn't look like me. My makeup looked strange. I just didn't look like Carmen. And I had to go and speak at an ev uh, event in the Philippines. I arrived and the organizers walked straight. Now remember... Um, the, everybody was, um, you know, it was from Coca-Cola all the way through to um, um, Nielsen. I mean, I'm not from Philippines, so I don't look like them. She came straight to me and she's like, are you the speaker speaking um, at, a, at, the, at our conference today? I'm like, yes. And she's like, you don't look like the person on your image. And that hit me so hard because it was like, oh, my gosh, you know. Um, what must this person think of me? Um, you know, coming, up, I, you know, the photo doesn't represent who I am. So it's very important when you do your photo shoots and you use photos that it looks like you. Um, I always say to my, um, you know, to my clients when we do thought leadership, um, especially with with big corporate women, um, we also work a lot with the CEOs and um, the the executive boards. We would then have to build content strategies for for every person and then we would say okay right this is what we're going to do this is what you need to talk about this is you know this is this is where the audiences want what they want to hear from you and we do that audits and we help them with that process and it's always important that when you do those photo shoots if if a person feels that they love the way that they put their makeup on and they don't want a makeup artist that's also fine um, and, you know, let people bring their authentic selves to the table. There's obviously some coaching and guiding that can help you to dress a little bit better and just look good on camera. But it's also when you're in your personal brand capacity, when you when you put yourself out into the world is you want people to take you seriously as well. Um, and, you know, speak your mind and have a, an opinion. But at the same time, we also want to be authentic and, you know, take uh, leadership and, and knowing that being vulnerable and being yourself is always welcomed. And people are gravitating more to people who are showing authenticity right now because we are moving into an augmented world. We're moving into a post-truth world, a post-truth world where we are not going to know what's the truth anymore. We are going to move into a space where it's face to face. Um, where people want to see a person eye to eye. Yesterday, I had a phenomenal interview with my friend, Adriana Marie. Um, she's also serving on our advisory board. And one of the things that stood out to me, what she said is, in order for us to change the system, in order for us to make a change in the world, we need to start looking each other in, in the eyes. And that was just like, so true. I mean, if you look at all the technologies in the world right now, what is the one thing that they want? It's not just attention. They want your eyeballs. Your eyeballs shows them the emotion, how your pupils dilute and how they move. It tells people what you think and how you are feeling about a certain thing. If, you, if you're looking at an advertising promotion of some sort and you look left, it means you're not interested in it. There's certain behaviors that you might not be aware of, but that the um, technology picks up. And that's why our eyeballs is more important than our fingerprints. So um, it makes sense because the eyes is the windows to the soul. So if you are going to to present yourself and you and your personal branding, look at look people in the eye, um, you know, engage with them. That was very um, thought provoking for me yesterday because you know it's something so simple but so true. So I want to talk about my personal my personal um, journey. So I I always had a problem for myself is to go out and tell people what I've achieved and what I've done. And I've always felt a bit of shame towards that until one of my mentors said to me, listen, Carmen, if you've done it, why is it, why is it self-promotion? It's the truth. And that was a big aha moment for me because yes, it is. It's not. And it, if you've done something and you feel that it can bring value in the room, in the space that you're in, and you're saying, I have done the following things, I believe that I'm qualified to assist you with the following, I do believe that there's nothing wrong in saying what you have accomplished and if it's going to be adding value. Um, I think also that when it comes to, for me personally, um, I've had struggles with my, my weight my entire life. And when I was traveling the world, when I when I think about it now, I want to kick myself. 
I was feeling so insecure about my weight and what people were thinking about me. Or I always asked the photographers not to um, to take photos of me. I asked them not to film me just because I felt so ashamed of what I looked like on camera. I wanted to run away. I hated seeing myself. And um, there was um, when I was in Prague, there was um, a whole set up there and it just and I, I, it, I had to rush to the airport and I forgot to tell them. And I almost died when I saw they filmed me and they put it on onto the, um, you know, onto onto their website and it just went moggy. And I was just really not content with it. So I went for a gastric band operation in order for me not to, <laughs> to look overweight because I was so concerned of what the world is going to think of me because so many people would come to me and say to me, oh, my gosh, you know, um, if you are overweight, you know, that means you're not disciplined. If you're not disciplined, then I don't know if we can. People have actually said that to me face to face because they felt comfortable. They can just tell me anything. And people used to express to me that they feel that, you know, um, uh, being overweight is a, is a lack of um, self-discipline. So it was something I've always been very conscious about. And I lost 50 kilos, did my thing. I looked fabulous top of the world and what happens next perimenopause comes knocking at my door and I had to make a big decision um, am I going to pause my entire life because I care about what, what other people think or maybe um, all of these marketers and um, the theory of marketing telling me that I need to look like this perfect model and if I don't say these things and act this way that I'm not relevant and I decided I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to rebel with a cause. I'm not going to do that. So for me, talking to you right now, feeling the way that I'm feeling in my body is bravery and it's courage. But it is important to get comfortable with yourself and loving yourself. And this is part of building a personal brand. It's the inside job that needs to happen. Um, is even when you are feeling uncomfortable, is to feel comfortable. The first 30 seconds when you speak at some of the biggest events, like I remember um, in Indonesia, we had about a um, thousand people in the room and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. And I learned this one thing is the first 30 seconds when you're on stage, the first 30 seconds is horrific. <laughs> you feel like you, you, you're diving out of a plane and you feel like you don't have a parachute. But after that 30 seconds, you ease out. So always when you do your presentations or do your talks or know that you're going to be on TV or you're going to do these things, just plan your first 30 seconds um, when you speak. And that helps you to, to create environments where, or create um, things for yourself when you build your personal brand that you can have coping mechanisms. Then talking about the inside job, in my personal journey, what, what I've done is I studied numerology to learn everything about myself, my lineage, going back to the 1600s, who am I, who, my personal self. But at the, on top of that, I studied my postgraduate diploma in management practice at Henley. And that was all about, that was intense because it was also a lot to do with self-reflection. And one thing that is so important, so many times, the older we become, the more we become ourselves. And it's important for us to go back to our innocent child. It is important for us to remember who we were when we were younger, three, four, five years old, because that inner child knew what the purpose was. And when I started going to my inner child and I started visiting her, my inner self and who I was when I was younger, I remembered and I forgot so much about my youth and through reflection and, and really going through the healing and understanding my journey and what am I passionate about? These things really, really helped me. Another thing is to take your CV, go through your CV and look at the things that you're currently doing that you love and put more emphasis on that on your CVs and start removing the things on your CV that you don't like as much and don't give it so much light because the more the more energy you give that the more you're going to attract that that you don't like and you're not going to be happy in in your endeavors I want to share a book with you um this book is so incredible um I actually have two of them and my husband we also both went through this um the past year and it's like a journal, right? And inside the journal, 
there's all these questions that to allow you to go deeper into your in, into your into yourself and to understand yourself. What is it that you love? Um, it's asking a lot of deep questions in order for you to dive into your healing. I highly recommend it. It's about 440 rand, but it's life changing and it really changed um, things for me. Just reflecting and and writing to yourself. So these things are important to awaken the purpose within you. But obviously that's not all. There's more that you can do. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever done the Gallup's um, straight, uh, the Gallup strength, strength assessment. So I did that. That was part of my awakening. I was like, oh my gosh, that is really who I am. And I could completely resonate with it. Um, if you if you look it up on Google, um, it's it's really um, easy. It's, I think it's like fifty dollars or something. And you do the test, and the Gallup Strength Test shows you what your strengths are. Now I didn't know at that time what mine was. Sorry, excuse me. Having my daily dose of collagen. Um, the Gallup Strength Assessment revealed, for example, I'm a future futurist. And believe it or not, in my day in my day job, that's exactly what I do is I help companies to predict futures. Um, ideation, I conceptualize ideas. I am an ideas baby. I'm all about that. Um, inputs is one of my characteristics um, and one of my strengths. Um, and activator. So when I have an idea or thought, I want to activate it. That's also true. So this is important for you to do that for yourself so that you can see, okay, right, these are my strengths. How am I going to use this to activate my purpose? You might say, okay, right. And I, I highly recommend uh, every person has has different modalities or divine mo modalities that they like to use. Some people go and see astrologers, some numerologists, some go and see a psychic, um, or some people would just, um, you know, go through on a psychedelic journey. There's so many different ways of how people are starting to tap into their higher self. Some people are doing it just through meditation. Um, start having a practice for yourself and Ask yourself, how do I access my purpose? May that be revealed to me um, and, and really put it on your heart because it will start revealing itself to you. Um, I also think that critical incident logging is something that I cannot tell you has changed me for who I am today. I did not remember most of my life as a child growing up. It was history and this is all the inside jobs that we need to do in order for us to discover our purpose and i started doing incident logging you think of an incident that really upset you when you were a child or something you have to go to the pain ones and you know the ones that 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 you avoiding your entire life you go there and you start looking and say okay right here's the incident log who was the characters who was there what did they say um how did I react? How did they react? Who was right? Who was wrong? And you almost need to go outside of the situation of the incident and say, okay, right, whoever's gone gone through this, who you you can't say it was all, you have to write it from everybody's perspective. It's the same when we do systems thinking, right? Systems thinking, we do the CATWO analysis. Um, and we look at the lenses from different departments, different stakeholders in order to understand that. The same thing with incidents in our lives. We need to be able to take an object, objective view of every situation and everything that has happened in our lives and say, maybe I was wrong here, or maybe the way that I thought it happened was not the real thing. Now, that critical incident logging, when I started doing it, after a year of doing it, I promise you, it's like you become so conscious, and you become so aware, and it almost is like you start remembering things. Um. I started eating, I know this sounds silly, right? Me talking about weight and here I go. I started eating things from my childhood. I started e eating um, medicine, oh, eating medicine. I started, um, for example, having mangoes. I used to love mangoes as a child. Um, I started um, having ice cream, like eating it like a child. I bought myself snakes and ladders, for example, and I played with myself. My husband said to me, what is going on with you? I said, I'm trying to remember my childhood. <laughs> And he said, you're crazy. But it actually, it's like you find that innocent child and you like, you, you, you entertain it. 
although it seems silly at the, in the moment, but you start having memories and then that, that's the memories. Then I go, oh, I remember this with my grandmother, with Omar. You know, we used to talk about these things while we were playing snakes and ladders or when I used to have mango, there was this one time and I started writing down all of these memories. And as I started writing down all these memories, I started remembering the purpose and why I am here and that started to reveal itself to me because I because our, our water holds memory and our body is 70 percent water but also our muscles hold memory and our senses we our bodies are incredible so when you actually tap into that you start remembering who you are and that is the awakening that is the beginning of your awakening in any shape or form in the podcast you'll find these um, resources where i interviewed a reiki master to talk about um what the spiritual awakening is but if i if i move on sorry Dorcas, just want to let Dorcas in these are the things that I think is also very important is understanding the layers of who you are, the dimensions of who you are. Carl Jung is one of my favorite psychologists, and I believe in the Carl Jung typology. Um, in during my studies, that was the main psychologist that we were dealing with and looking at the archetypes of who we are. The tools that I would recommend that you go to understand your typology. This is life changing, ladies, life changing. I am an ENFP. I'm more of an extrovert, but I can also move into introversion. Um, I'm just I'm a I'm a feeler. Um, and it gives you like a breakdown. There's four there's four areas or axes where you can go, and it breaks it down. And it's phenomenal. It's and when you do this, there's actually a very cool test. It's called the Jung. I'm gonna actually type it for you here. It's called the Jung typology test you google that and you do the test they ask you about 80 questions and you're going to be blown away by the type of personality you are and then the type of personality that it gives you go and research that if you want to go more into depth with this one you can go to Maya Briggs and do the Maya Briggs personality I know that a lot of corporates do that for people because understanding that typology for me that's the most accurate um, understanding of my personality I've ever had and it doesn't matter how much you change that personality doesn't change and it's got its shadows and you start learning about those shadows and becoming far more aware when you are in the rooms how you need to behave and how you need to be if you for example sitting on a panel and you need to you need to bring your opinion across sometimes you need to recognize those things within your personality that might prevent other people from speaking their minds and hold back not because you're not being authentic, but you're holding back because you need to make sure that everybody has equality on a panel, for example. Um, another thing that I um, highly recommend that you do, it's called the Life Values Inventory. Life's Value Inventory. Go and do an audit on your values. I did mine with a psychologist. I found that to be very useful. I interrogated every single value before I started redesigning my personal brand. I wanted to know exactly what I stand for, why I'm standing for it. And um, and it's sometimes very, very difficult. But the thing is, if you don't have a, a values inventory and don't do it often for yourself, what happens is you become a people's pleaser and the people's pleasing disease happens. And you start form like you start shaping the content of what you want to say to fit into the rooms. Whereas it's um, one of my um, I actually went for acting classes and all those kind of things. Yeah, you know, and I'm so so much into the drama and the theatrics. It's crazy. Anyway, I went um, to for acting classes and um, and then I asked the lady that helped me with my acting um, to join me at one event. And I was like, oh my gosh, I felt like. I said what I wanted to say, which I was very passionate about, but I do feel that there was about 20% of people that didn't agree with what I said. And she said, Carmen, that 20% that you've just spoken to, all the people that's not going to stop thinking about what you said, those are the people you're going to change. And that to me was probably one of the best advice I've ever received is we go in to be so obedient and 
to go in and say things that people want to hear, but we don't rattle the cages. And sometimes if we want to bring change, we need to say what's really, truly on our mind. And we'll find that there's actually safety in that, but you also need to make sure that when you are doing that, that you deliver it in a way that it's safe for everybody, that you don't leave a person traumatized that they want to go and see a psychologist after you you landed your point. Um, Darshni and I had a, a, um, a discussion on the podcast um, the other day where we were talking about very deep stuff, things I've never spoken about in public. Um, about my Afrikaansness and how I was so ashamed of 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 being Afrikaans that I completely stopped talking it. Um, I, I I just don't talk Afrikaans and now I'm like I want to be Afrikaans again. I can't remove myself from the fact that I'm Afrikaans and not embrace my Afrikaansness because it's who I am. It's it's what makes me common. Um, and this is the thing is we need to bring our whole selves to the table. When we bring only a part of ourselves, this is when people start picking it up. It's like you're trying to be somebody you're not. Be okay with it. Obviously, it's it's a work in progress. I don't always feel safe to take my mask off all the time with everybody. And sometimes it's okay to keep your mask on when you don't feel safe. But it's important for you always just to know you know who you are. Um, I think a very important conversation I had the other day was also around authentic um, leadership. Is the moment when we show up as leaders and we don't bring ourselves and our values and who we are to the table and we we pretend to be somebody we're not what happens is we become resentful and we feel like we don't fit in and the moment we feel like that we start becoming frustrated and when we start becoming frustrated what's happening is we show up around people and we make life very unpleasant for people around us because we are not comfortable being or maintaining or upholding the persona of who we are. And this is why the inside job of your personal brand is so, so important so that you can work on being audacious enough to go into the things of who you are, address those shadows, address the things that you don't like about yourself and laugh at those things as well. It's also okay, but it's important to know who you are and understanding the dimensions of you and how how there's things that you possibly need to work on um, in order for, for you to, to build your brand. Because building a brand, a personal brand, is all about whoever you're putting out in the world is you. It's a version of you and it's it needs to be reciprocated um, where people meet you face to face or they read your biography or they see you speak at a conference. They must feel that they're always dealing with the same person, not different versions of you. It needs to be one person that stands for certain things because then you will be you'll be endorsed and the sponsorship for you will happen in rooms where you're not because people will remember you. People remember authenticity always. So um, as I mentioned, go and do that values inventory. It gives you so much insight and do it often um, so that you can solidify your personal anchors. And then also it's important to understand your story. I think that it's so, so important for us as leaders to, to have to go and look at everything that's happened in our story. I always go to the hero's journey. The Euro's journey, if you also look at Carl Jung, you can do um, archetype, um, the Jung archetypes test online, where you can understand what is your archetypes, your personality archetypes. And I'll get into that a little um, shortly, just when as I go into the technical stuff, um, the, the actual things that you need to do when you build your personal brand, the, the cool stuff. <laughs> this is the deep stuff. Okay. Um, so understanding your story and what's your hero's journey, you know, what was the, your call to adventure? What was the one thing that you did and you thought you'd never be able to do it? And all of a sudden everything works in your favor and then you meet a mentor along the way and somebody changes your life. And then you have to learn all of these crazy lessons. You cannot watch one single movie without, if you, if you understand the hero's journey, once you understand that, you will never be able to unsee it because it's in every movie um, and understanding those archetypes and, and um, characters. OK, so let's get into. So so just to conclude, the, the inside job is very important um, when you build your um, personal brand, because therein lies your story. Therein lies your values. Therein lies who you're going to show up as your authentic leadership and also the things that you need to become conscious about and also coming 
Um, if you want to be a thought leader of industry, whatever you, you are talking about, whether it's banking, whether it is customer experiences, whether it's technology, you can still bring your all of your expertise to the table. But still, when you put your personal brand out there, people, it's how you're going to make them feel when they read about you, how, you, the, how you're going to make them feel um, when you are shaking hands with them. All of those things are very important. And that's all about the inside job. But I'm giving you very much high level. But if you just do those tests that I've given you, um, it will start opening up the purpose within you. And you'll start going, oh, this is what I'm very good at. So these are the things I need to work on. Right. So when we do branding for a business, we always do what is the personal brand archetypes. So if you look like a, um, a Harley Davidson or you'll look at a Jenna Clifford or you'll look at um, a Coca-Cola, they all have a different personality. And the brand's personality, it needs to have a certain tonality. If we look at Nando's, it's cheeky um, and witty or a banking, it will be more formal, that brand type will come, come across. But there's nothing wrong in you doing that personal brand archetypes on yourself, right? To understand what type of brand you are as, as a person. Like if you like to be funny, if you like to be witty, I know what I am. Um, I did the test on myself and um, I am a rebel, <laughs> a rebel with a cause. I always want to go against the grain. I call myself a sacred rebel, but I always want to go against the grain. I always want to do things differently. I like to be original. I like to be creative and I like to, to change things up. And if I see people start doing it, then I'm like, oh, I've got to change direction because I always um, want to, to feel like I'm doing something with the cause, but I'm also just expressing my 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 creativity right so the six types of personal brands that you you get the first one is the alchemist the al oh sorry the the altruist sorry wrong word <laughs> i must have said that for a reason um is the altruist so this is committed in helping others then you get the careerist and the careerist is the career driven and it is to raise status in the industry then you've got the hipster and the hipster is recognized subculture of progressive individuals. Hipsters adopt aspects of altruism and careerism. So it's a combination of being an altruist and a careerist. And um, they like they play not with their career, but they also use their experiences and their story and motivate others um, through their, their altruistic side. Then you get the connector. The connectors are people who pride themselves on their ability to openly use their network to bring people together. And then you've got the selective. And the selective um, shares information with specific people. It's a very niche sharing of, of information. Um, if, if, for example, if you think in the technology industry, when a CIO goes into, um, you know, into a talk and he talks about um, misinformation, when that conversation is specifically targeted to a very, very niche audience, then you get the boomerang and the boomerang refers to people who share content and generate interactions simply to create discord through controversy. Now, I can be a boomerang, but I can also be the hipster. But I think it's important to understand where do you feel comfortable and and then take those characteristics and say, okay, right, how can I actually apply this in my own in my own um, a personal brand to understand who I am and how I'm showing up? Then the um, interesting thing is, so you can do, um, there's a quiz, I think there's, it's called vision1.co.uk. They've got a quiz, which is the brand archetypes, where you can do an archetype quiz on yourself. So try and look at um, different um, brand archetypes and see how you can use that for yourself. The other thing, when you understand what your brand archetype is and you know if you're a rebel or if you're a innocent child whatever that brand archetype is that is how you start forming your story your story is all going to be around what is your biography what is that thing is when i say can you be a speaker at one of our events how do you tell your story in a way that brings that personality across that is very very important a biography is very different to um you know it's like a almost like a resume some people's bog uh, biographies like 
and this and this, and it just doesn't land. It doesn't resonate. Where if you give your your um, story a little bit of personality, you're a tour de force. You do these things. You're super excited and highly passionate about development of of people and all of those things. When you start bringing um, more humanity into your biography, you gravitate towards um, people, and people gravitate towards you. I believe that it's very important to register your domain register so i remember <laughs> i remember when i um when i started um a common murray so everybody's like why you call everything common murray it was actually very strategic it's because there was this woman in um america there was a, a housewife or something and her name was carmen murray and whenever people were looking for me it was just her images all <laughs> over the show and I just couldn't be found or discovered online and I'm in digital and I have to practice what I preach, right? So I was like, yeah, I've got to find a different way of doing this. So I then registered my domain, CarmenMurray.com. I then changed my business name from Buya to Carmen Murray Communications. My podcast is called The Carmen Murray Show. And all of that was not done because I'm vain. It's because I know the power of my name. And I understand what that name means. And I also understand that if I want to, to gain respect, people need to see how active I am out there. And that was the, the reason um, I, changes, I changed to Carmen Murray Communications. Um, what I wanted to, to highlight, which I believe is very important. So now that you, if you look at your inside job, here's the things that I highly recommend when building um, your personal brand. And this is how you do it. The first thing that you need to do is obviously look at your um, conscious sense. And your conscious sense is when you start looking at those inside job things I shared with you just now. It's your values, what's your personality, the tonality, how your voice comes across, what you want to say, the impact. And the purpose that you feel that you are living and standing for, how are you living that out in your career, in your talks, in wherever and every room you find yourself, are you bringing that to the table? Cindy Gallup always says, um, it is. you can take any topic that you are given and you can still bring it back to your purpose. You can swing around a topic to elevate and, and equip people with the information that you need them to know. Um, so it's important for you to always know what you stand for and why you're standing for it. Then do a mood board. A mood board to understand. I always when when starting your your brand, what is the colors that you gravitate towards? Like what is the? Um, I love going to Pinterest and I just start creating a, a board there of all the things that really inspire me. And this is usually how I start building. A brand. I always start with a mood board and then from the mood board it expands. If you look at conscious leaders, conscious leaders, I think it took us six months um, to, to do this brand CI for it is because I wanted to make sure it resonates and it's got the colors and it makes me excited and I feel like it comes to life. Um, so that mood board will help you to understand the colors, the fonts, um, and also start looking at the people that inspire you, um, that you can almost say, put the three of them, what is it that you like about their personal brand? What don't you like? How can you start taking hacks and tricks from them and start applying it in your own personal brand? The other thing is also go for a professional photo shoot. There's nothing... Um, Worse when people ask you for an image, and especially if you you ask to speak at a big event or, you know, like with me with my podcast, um, I sometimes interview very serious people, and then I ask somebody else to or a a, a brand will approach me and ask, will you please interview this person, etc. Which I'll do, but then there's not proper images available of this person, and it just brings down my creative outlets and how I like um, things to go out for for my podcast, the business, etc. So if you're working with big um, organizations and you're speaking at these big events and you have poor quality images that you frustrate people on the other side and you frustrate the designers and also 
um, it, you look jaded. It means if you still have a photo of yourself in your 20s and you're 60 years old, you are basically um, saying that you are not willing to change and you you reminiscing on the old version of you and you don't like this new version of you. And this is something that I'm dealing with now as well. Um, I'm doing my um, photo shoots on, on the fourth and this is the new version of me and I need to be comfortable with it. I don't want people to keep on seeing the old photos of me. Um, another thing about um, your photo shoots is also um, if you don't have images of yourself, um, it's very difficult, for example, if you get promoted to be on an executive board and there's not professional images of you, yet that needs to go to a website. It needs to, if there's, if, if you, the company that you're working for is on the JSE, people, the first thing, and, and this we know through netnography, is all of these companies that are um, JSE listed, the first thing that people research is the leadership. The biographies need to be up to date. The images needs to be updated. They go and see what they're talking about. What is their thought leadership? What's going on on social media? What are they saying? And the thing is, if they're not saying anything, there's no trust. If you're not vocal as, as a leader and you're in such a big position, people don't trust you. And your organization, your staff and your employees also don't trust you. And this is in, and there's actually research studies um, but that shares that insight in depth from academic papers to, um, you know, social media uh, research that was done on executives and then their teams. It's so important that if you are in a position of power that you do have your brand out there and that you are taken seriously because you want people to have faith in you. You want to be a hope dealer. You want to use your power to do something amazing. But if you are shy and you feel that you're being boasty, it's not about being boasty. There's a lot of people betting on you. There's a lot of people that make very important decisions about the impact that you are bringing to the table and in the in the position that you're sitting and where you go and speak and um, who's paying attention to you. All of those things have a very big effect on companies. It has a very big effect on you. It has a very big effect on investors and stakeholders. So it is important to have a, a, a decent brand in place and have proper photo shoots because that is the first thing um, when I need to make um, decisions on organizations or I need to make decisions on investments and those things. I look at the leadership and I analyze them and now that I've got numerology under my belt, I, I can look at um, shareholders and I can actually look at this, um, the stock exchange and I can actually analyze those numbers um, just through numerology. But that's I'm not I'm not going to talk about that now because that's going to make me go into a different bubble. Biography. Right. Get a Get a, um, a wordsmith to write your biography. A wordsmith is a person that's a little bit more creative. Um, writes in stories and gives you punchy bumper stickers like you know a, a, like for example I loved um, R. Woodsmith when he said once um, I'm like I put the uh, uh, the uh, kapal the kapal back into marketing putting the kapal back into marketing that is so so me so I was like yes I like that that's a very cool thing um, so try and 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 employ somebody um, for your task. I mean, it's much easier just for you to to go and find a copywriter um, that's creative. And uh, you know, you can even um, if your business or your organisation that you're working for have PR and communication budgets. Lift up your hand and say, hey, I want to be a thought leader in the organization and leverage the um, the budgets that are available in order for you to get your thoughts out. But if you don't, um, if you don't express it already, if you don't have um, blogs going out or you're not writing articles or you're not doing videos or you're not having a podcast or you're not doing any of those things, it's going to be difficult for people to 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 join the dots one and two. Why, why must they drive PR and communications behind you? as an executive if you're not really vocal because when you are vocal people will start paying attention to you and opportunities will open for you that expands your personal brand if you what was the um michael jordan um from first national bank man was smart oh. best best thing 
ever because Michael Jordan went and he created, he contacted he, every person that had a complaint. He was on top of it. He was um, communicating with everybody what he was thinking. He was um, having so much thought leadership going out. Everybody loved him. And there was such a big debate when he left um, FMB, um, who's going to take over his account because um, he's built such a massive brand. Um, on FMB, and that's when you're in powerful positions. And I'm sorry to say that, but when you are and you're not leveraging the the role that you have and the role that you're playing to build your own personal brand, it's a missed opportunity. Let me put it that way. Um, I call it have a B elevator um, uh, pitch. A B elevator is basically when you're in a in a in a room and somebody asks you what you do, is you have a catch line. And um, so I love Cindy Gallup's one. Um, Cindy Gallup is, she calls herself, I am the Michael Bay of business. I like to blow shit up. That's how she introduces herself in rooms. But she does that so she can repel the people that's going to waste her time so she can get to the people that's going to actually listen to what she has to say because she's a very powerful um, a personality um, in, in, in the States and in, in the advertising industry. The Belevator pitch is how do you want to be introduced when you're not in the room? That is the most important. It's like people remember your tagline, your personal tag tagline. As I mentioned, register a domain. And then start writing. For me, I am not so fond of writing. I love having conversations on my podcast. Like that, that just makes me so happy. So I use that as my as my way of doing things and and to build my and expand my knowledge. But at the same, sorry, sorry about that. Um, and to expand my knowledge, I think it's so important. Also, when you do have a podcast, you get to rub shoulders with incredible people, get to learn from them, and vice versa. I mean, it's such a wonderful way to to build your brand in a way that you're a thought leader, but you're also collaborate collaborating on knowledge. Um, read a lot. I read. If I mean every week or every month, there's new books that's coming in here that I put on my list that I want to read. I'm always reading academic papers. My team and I will sit with academic papers and we'll workshop them. It's very important for you to stay up to date with the trends and where things are going. Um, listen to podcasts, not your own. Listen to other people's podcasts and, and you will learn a lot from other people. Experiment. Nothing is going to be perfect. You're going to accidentally land on something that's going to be a hit experiment with what you want to put out there. Try and do Petra Kutcher's. I don't know if any of you have done Petra Kutcher's, but Petra Kutcher's allows for you to tell or to present a story. So 20 slides in 20 seconds, only with an image. When you do Petra Kutcher's, you learn to be more succinct and practicing um, Petra Kutcher actually helps you to present better. We do it with our team. We have Petra Kutcher sessions. We can, um, and we'll take a topic that nobody understands and we'll say, okay, Right, let's talk about um, asteroid mining. And asteroid mining is the topic, then that is going to be a Petra Kutcher, and you're going to educate your entire team in, in a very short amount of time. I think in total it's about six minutes when you do a Petra Kutcher. Um, I know some people, um, you know, call things out, speak up, and I, I know people have different opinions on, on that terminology. But when something doesn't sit well with you, have the courage to say, I respectfully disagree. Say it. Say those words. Nobody's going to get offended. And I've learned that specifically from the academic world is that we need to get comfortable to say, I hear what you're saying, but I respectfully disagree. Here's why. Back it up with some data and start when you go onto social, especially in LinkedIn, start looking at what people are saying. And if you're agreeing with it, say something. You don't agree with it. I like what you're saying. However, I respectfully disagree and here is why. This helps to build your personal brand because people can see that you actually have something to say. It's a wonderful way. Um, and I, I do that um, as often as I can now. I'm too busy. But I mean, um, in the past, I used to try and do 100 a day. And then I would just communicate with people. And 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 when we do this for, for corporate brands and community management, um, that's also one of the tactics that we use. Um, another thing is uh, punchy videos, try and keep them one minute to three minutes. They work like a bomb. Just grab your phone and start giving yourself a challenge to put a video out once a week. That is so important to build confidence. 
I took myself out of the industry as a personal um, brand and as a public speaker for the past three years. And now I have to get back into the swing of it. And it's tough. And the thing that I try and do as often as I possibly can is to rip out the camera and say what's on my mind when I feel compelled to do so. It helps to build confidence. And if you don't start, you're not going to improve. And it helps. So when you're going to um, be on TV, you're going to be on a radio, and, uh, there's a subject matter that you need to have an opinion on. You're just going to have a lot more confidence in yourself. Um, then try and have webinars like these forums are great. You can use Microsoft Teams. I mean, look at this. We're using Microsoft Teams and we're having a conversation here. Yeah, you can just create a webinar out of on a Saturday morning, or you can bring people together after five o'clock or six o'clock in the evening, talk about a passion or something that you're really passionate about, but also feel that that's something um, that drives purpose for you in your life. Or you have amazing friends and you go like, okay, well, I, why can't I chat with my friends about certain topics um, that people can get, get an experience of what it's like to be in the room with you. Um, you also build confidence so that you can be better at networking. Um, creating workshops. Um, when you read a book and that there's something that's interesting in there, create a workshop out of it. When you don't understand something, create a workshop. And when you create that workshop, um, that is also something that you um, can be um, that can be something that you can start creating your side hustle with, you know, if you if you're planning in five or 10 years to be in a completely different um, domain, you know, and you want to specialize in something else. That's how you start as you start with workshops um, and then um, volunteer at associations. Um, I've done that many times in my life. Now I'm just too busy. But when you volunteer at associations, you get to be in the rooms with the powerful people and you get to exchange um, conversations and so forth. And then um, read a lot of industry reports. And I want to close off by just saying is there's amazing tools that you can use out there like Grammarly, like Canva, um, you know, you can build your website in a jiffy on Wix and all of those things, Squarespace, WordPress. Um, there's an amazing tool called Answer the Public and Answer the Public helps you to see what people are searching for. So if you're looking for a topic and you want to see if it's trending, use Google Trends and Answer the Public to understand if this is um, the topic that you're talking about is relevant. MailChimp is a very easy tool to use it to, um, to build a little database and put it out in the world. Um, and then, um, yeah, these are absolutely paramount things for you to do. And just always remember the mistakes that people make with, with personal branding is the following. They fake authenticity. They try and blend in. Imitation. They play the imitation game where they copy and paste what everybody else is doing. Soon people will catch you out if you if you're not doing things out of your own internal interest and you are saying things that other people are saying people call you out when you're not in the room and that is very damaging um and also they lack to put the ability to put into effect what is on their minds um try and be succinct in that regard and also don't use vanity metrics um oh, I had a million likes. That's not necessarily, it's not about the likes. It's about did people read what you had to say? Those are the things that are far more important. Don't be a content DJ repurposing other people's things. Have your own opinion on matters. The reason for this is that you don't build a false economy and the false economy of you because you are powerful, you're amazing, and you're going to do amazing things. You're going to be in rooms and you're going to change things. And I am rooting for you and I'm very excited to see the future of conscious leaders and where all of you are going to go out there and shape a world that we all want to live in and, you know, be hope dealers. But hope is not just about bringing hope. Hope also needs to have the action part um, associated with it. So I wish you all the best. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope I didn't blah, blah, blah too much and that I gave you some useful tips and um, some exercises to do that would really open up for you. Mm -hmm.